number 17 reads, An artillery shell is fired with an initial velocity of 300 meters per second at 55 degrees above the, the horizontal. To clear an avalanche, it explodes on a mountainside 43 seconds after firing. What are the X and Y coordinates of the shell where it explodes relative to its firing point? So here's what we have. We got a little, um, let me redo that. We have a little cannon. It gets fired from right here. Mm. Magnitude is 300 meters per second, and the angle is 55 degrees. So we can use 300 times sine of 55 equals our y, and 300 times cosine of 55 equals our x. This is initial velocities for x and y. So remember, x's initial velocity is going to remain unchanged, um, except for minor differences due to uh, air, pre air, you know, air um, resistance. But we're going to assume that that's negligible. So the x remains unchanged, but y does change because gravity is pulling it back down as it's trying to go up. So the the uh, thing you want to remember is that what we're calculating here are the initial velocities. The, the initial velocity um, is uh, really the only thing we need to figure out the rest. So what are these equal? The y magnitude is 245.75 meters per second. The x magnitude is 172.1 meters per second. So, and those are initial velocities. Well, if it travels for 43 seconds, how far over will it go? Well, we remember that um, for constant velocity, the displacement or the distance was the velocity times the time. And we could remember that in a graph, I, I kind of want to explain the graphs just in case you forgot. If this is the velocity and this is the time, distance is going to be the area under the curve. So for constant velocity, um, the area is simply the length times the width. So the velocity times the time will give us the area under the curve, which is our distance. So what it, that ends up being um, that the velocity was 143, I'm sorry, 172.0, um, well, we'll just try it, 172.1, and the time was 43 seconds. So, uh, one, I keep saying, I want to say 140, 172.1 times 43 seconds, because that's what the problem gives us the time. The problem says 43 seconds later. So, that gives us the total distance over our x displacement is 7,399.13 meters. And our y displacement is going to be a little bit more tricky. So you remember our y uh, initial velocity was 245. Gosh darn it, I cannot do this. 245.75 meters per second. I'm going to go ahead and give you the formula for um, the change in y. Change in y, and then I'm going to teach you how to derive that formula um, just for future references. So the change in y equals the initial velocity times the time plus. <coughs> one-half of the acceleration times the time squared. Don't forget to square it. And so what that means is that our, our change in y equals 245.75 times 43 seconds 
plus one half of negative nine point eight equals negative four point nine times forty three squared. That gives you a total change of y is one thousand five hundred and six point nine six meters. Now uh, that's your, that's the end. The, the x is 7,399.13. The y is 1,506.96. Now, so you get the answer. Uh, what I'm going to do right now is teach you why this works. I'm going to show you a graphical way and a mathematical way. So, the first thing is we have our definition of average velocity. So, change in y over t equals the average velocity. And but average velocity is defined another way. Average velocity is the v final. I'm sorry, the the v final minus the v initial. So it's average velocity is the change in velocity. The, um, I'm sorry, not change. It's it's added together and divided by two. So the the original velocity plus the final velocity divided by two is the average velocity. And so. We could change the uh, this formula to say the change in y over t equals vf plus vi over 2. And then we could even move the t out to um, make it change in y equals all of this over 2 times t. And this is good uh, most of the time. So your your distance equals your average velocity times your time. The problem is usually you're either usually you're given you're not given the final velocity, you're given the acceleration. So what we have is our our change in y equals our final velocity plus our initial velocity over 2 times t and uh so but we we need to figure out how to get rid of the final velocity and insert acceleration. So we can look at our, our formula for acceleration. Acceleration is the change in velocity divided by time. And so we can solve for final velocity. Um, final velocity minus initial velocity equals AT. And final velocity equals initial velocity plus AT. So I can take this this portion of it anyhow and I can insert it right there so I would have my change in y equals my initial velocity plus at that would go there plus my initial velocity again over 2 and all of that times time which I can't squeeze in there the times time so <clears throat> At this point, we have our change in y equals the initial velocity plus at plus the initial velocity over 2 times time. We can group the initial velocity together, and we end up getting uh, the change in y equals 2 times the initial velocity plus a t over 2 times t and we can break apart our our addition components to be our change in velocity equals 2 uh, times the initial velocity over 2 plus a uh, 1 half uh, we, we, we won't go that, far, that step yet plus um, a t over 2 times t and so these twos can cancel each other out um, and then this can be brought out to a one-half so you have change in velocity equals the initial velocity plus one-half acceleration times time times time so t squared and so to talk about what we did to get to this formula all we did was we used the definition of the initial of, of the average velocity 
Um, we use two two ways of defining average velocity, which um, change in y over t, and uh, the final plus the initial divided by two. So we inserted that there, and then we solved for the change of y. And the the second part was we instead of um, having final velocity, we used our definition for acceleration and inserted um, a, an, a term for acceleration in there, and then we just simplified it. And so that's how um, you come up with your distance formula is well, with your, your formula for average velocity and your formula for acceleration.